Hello, I'm Rod Lawton, and I'm here to take a look at one of the rather clever live filters in Affinity Photo 2. It's the depth of field filter I'm looking at this time, and the clever part is that Affinity Photo's live filters are non-destructive. This means that you can go back at any time to change the settings if you decide the blur isn't quite right or the positioning is wrong. Using digital depth of field tools, you can create pretty convincing simulations of the real thing. And Affinity Photo's depth of field filter has a tilt shift mode that can add a convincing miniature look to overhead shots like this one. It can also be used, by the way, to create elliptical blur around a single subject to simulate a differential focus effect, where your subject is sharp but the background is blurred. For all sorts of reasons, digital depth of field effects are not exact replicas of the optical depth of field effects from using wide aperture lenses or photographing actual models. Nevertheless, they are close enough that you still get the broad effect and feel of shallow depth of field. The tilt shift effect shown here is especially interesting because it uses a kind of optical illusion where we associate shallow depth of field and this kind of foreground background blur with close up photography, which reinforces the idea that we're looking at a miniature model and not a real world scene. This works even better with subjects we're used to seeing in model form, such as this street scene viewed from above. A high viewpoint is actually an important part of the illusion because our brains are then more willing to accept a plane of sharp focus around the main subject and progressively increasing blur in what we perceive as the foreground at the bottom of the picture and the background at the top. Affinity Photo's implementation is especially interesting because it allows for a sharp strip in the center of the image that allows for a bit more control over what appears sharp and what is starting to blur. It doesn't restrict you to a very narrow single plane of sharp focus in the way that wide aperture camera lenses do. Because this is a live filter, the blur effect is not baked into the image pixels, but it exists on its own separate and re-editable live filter layer, so that you can go back at any point in the future to re-edit the effect. So, let's see how it's done. I've opened my start image, and it's a pretty regular shot of a town seen from the top of a castle. I reckon I can make this look like a little model village, with a careful application of Affinity Photo's live depth of field filter. You'll find Affinity Photo's live filters at the bottom of the layers panel. You need the fourth icon along in a central group of four, the one that looks a little like an egg timer. Clicking this will display a long pop-up menu of live filters. Don't get distracted by all the other blur filter options at the top of the list. The one you want is the depth of field filter a little way down the list. Once the filter is added, you'll see a panel where you can choose the options. Affinity Photo's depth of field filter can work in two modes, elliptical and tilt shift. The elliptical mode is set by default, where you get a circular area in the center that remains sharp and an outer circle to show where the full blur takes effect. In between, the blur is faded in gradually. This is fine for highlighting specific objects, but for our miniature effect, we need the tilt shift option. This adds a depth of field gadget to the image, which we can adjust and move around to control the blur. First though, we need to add some blur to show the effect, and this is done with a radius slider. Now you can see the blurring effect on the image towards the top and the bottom. Because we are looking down on the scene at a slant, our minds associate the blur at the top and the bottom of the image with distance. But before we go any further, let's check out the layers palette. You'll see that the new live filter appears as an icon alongside the image layer. You select the image layer icon to edit the image itself and the live filter icon to reopen its settings. You can also use the small disclosure arrow to expand this group of layers. This can be useful later on if you add masks or adjustments to that layer because it's easier to see what is going on and select the layer mask or filter that you need to adjust. Back with the image and the live depth of field filter still selected, we can start experimenting with the on-screen depth of field gadget. By default, this is placed horizontally in the center of the image, 
but we can change the angle and position of the effect to line up better with our subject, which is the street of red brick houses crossing the frame at a slight slant. The tilt shift gadget has a central control point for positioning it and inner and outer lines. The inner lines mark the edges of the central sharp strip of the image and the outer lines mark where the blur reaches full strength. In between is the transition area where the blur is gradually blended in. You can drag these inner and outer lines in and out independently to adjust the focus fall off and you can make it different for the background and foreground too. You might need to experiment with the controls and the blur radius at the same time to get your tilt shift effect looking just right. The live depth of field panel has two more sliders, vibrance and clarity. These are to help with the illusion that you're looking at a small scale model and not a real scene. These tiny scenes are often brightly colored and very clearly defined. Unlike the real world scene we started with where the colors are quite muted and there's some atmospheric haze. We'll push the vibrance up to maximum. Actually though, Affinity Photo's vibrance adjustment isn't that strong. So let's add a vibrance adjustment to fix this. Despite the name, the vibrance adjustment actually includes a saturation slider too. And that's what's going to give the strongest effect here. There is a difference between live filters and adjustments in Affinity Photo. Live filters are attached to specific layers, whereas adjustment layers are inserted above existing layers and affect every layer below them. Though you can attach them to specific layers if you need to by dragging their icon onto the image layer icon. In this case, we don't need to worry too much because we only have one image layer and our adjustment can stay at the top of the layer stack. So that's our tilt shift miniature effect finished. It can be a very convincing effect if you pick the right subject, photographed at the right angle, and Affinity Photo's live depth of field filter has all the tools you need to perfect the illusion. That's it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.